so the laser is all set up for its first job which I haven't explained what the laser is but I will in a second here and he is having some issues so I gotta go meet him so the laser with our flood irrigation if you imagine just opening a ditch or putting a hose on any flat surface the water is gonna run downhill in the least resist the path of least resistance so we're flood irrigating uh, fields we put up the borders if you've, I've shown you the videos of the borders being set now we're gonna laser from side to side from the, the top and then go side to side on those borders to make them slope downhill so the water flows downhill but then also dead flat side to side so the water runs evenly from one side of the border 125 foot over to the other side of the border and so this laser is very important and it's important to do it right it's a pretty simple design there is a transmitter on a tower that transmitter sends out a beam we tell the transmitter a gradient or geometry or the slope of the field so this transmitter is sending out the slope of the field which could be uh, oh man like our slope is so low uh, eight eight let's see point zero two hundredths two hundredths of a fall or or four hundredths it's, it's not very much a steep a steep field is a, is like eight or nine hundredths or something but uh yeah so there so the tower sends out this a beam that it, it spins it throws out this laser beam and it's telling it telling the receiver which the tractor is pulling the receiver is on top of a large uh, bucket scraper bucket and it is telling that scraper bucket either go up or go down if if, it, if the if the bucket itself is going up or the tra the receiver is moving up that means the bucket needs to go down to cut dirt away if the if the laser beam drops the receiver drops below the laser beam that means pick the bucket up so the bucket physically dumps there's Chad so the bucket physically dumps dirt out on the uh, on the on the for the low spots were now we a lot of it is guesswork the fall of a field is not the same all the way some fields might have four different slopes within one field and instead of forcing that field to have that same slope that whole that entire way we'll figure out the first couple hundred feet and then the next and the next and the last so and this uh, transmitter has a remote control in the tractor so we can change the slope as we're driving so we'll, let's say we pick a slope of uh, 0.035 and it starts getting steeper okay then we can uh, we or after a couple hundred feet then we can stop and turn it up and add add an, uh, another 0.01 to it so then we go to 0.045 and and as it gets steeper or flatter we can change it on the go um, so that's where a lot of guesswork is. You're kind of guessing what the, an educated guess. It is a very educated guess, I should say, on what the slope of that field is and the changes. Um, every field is different. Every field, the side has, the side fall is not always the same, especially after doing all the dirt work that we do. The dirt's been moved around back and forth with the disc, the ripper, the lamp plane. Um, so, if we've done a lot of land planing, sometimes you do have to cut a lot of dirt. Uh, other times you don't. But uh, anyway, so he's he, he just called me. This is the first time we've used it, used it this year, and he said it's not working. I'm gonna stop by Napa real quick and get some electrical cleaner, brake cleaner. Uh, I've got electrical tape, and it's, it's it's always something electrical. So I've got some tape and all the tools. I just don't have any electric cleaner, so. We'll grab some electric cleaner we'll go out there and you will get to see i'll show you the transmitter i'll show you the receiver the bucket it's hooked up to the uh, 9430 um, but you've seen that but uh yeah this will be this will be something new to a lot of you guys i mean they use it in construction building houses and buildings and 
yards, whatever, all over the country, but farming all over the country, you don't see this used everywhere. I talked to a guy out of Colorado the other day. He called, uh, called me and asked me about it because his borders are very narrow and the water all falls to one side of, each, of every, all the borders. And so, yeah, you need to laser level this out to uh, keep that from happening. So, uh, all right, well, I'm about to Napa. I'd take you guys in there with me, but then we won't get anything done. So, yeah, uh, we'll be at the laser before you know it. Okay, we're out here with the tractor, the laser set up. There's a transmitter, the receiver's on there. He's carrying it down. Inside on the screen, it's telling us there is no laser, but this is spinning. Did you check that to make sure there was a light? It's working, so we know that's working. And the fact that this won't receive it, so what we're gonna do is take this apart and clean it. It's a little dirty in here, which those are just lights. That shouldn't matter. This is where it receives it. And that actually looks pretty clean. So I'm not sure why this isn't working. So this is our challenge right now. And Will and I get to figure out, right? Yep. Because uh, this, this field needs to get, get laser. This is the first, the first field of the year. I told you guys I'd show you real quick. So this is the, the transmitter where we, where we enter in the uh, fall. And the receiver goes on this. And that, that uh, bar goes up and down uh, following the uh, following the light in the bucket these raise it these cylinders raise the bucket up or down and tell it whether the ground is too high or too low this bucket's made to do this and or we can carry dirt we can undo these chains and this blade slides all the way back and we can fill this bucket up with dirt and we can transfer dirt around the field uh, this tractor uh, quite a few tractors have them. this one's not well, it's smarter than the old ones but it's got an onboard system that, that works directly with the laser system, telling, telling the uh, cylinders up or down. Um, so anyways, oh, we got a leaky something over there. It's all dirty. But right now we're going to jump in the pickup with some tools because it's hot out here and try to figure this out and fix this problem. So that's the problem right now. Take this guy apart and clean it. It looks pretty clean though. Man, okay, well, I'll let you know how it goes. Fiddled around and tried to get to get it to work. I ended up having to call my uh, friend and neighbor, some really good farmers. I'm hoping to have him on the show a lot. Man, he's very knowledgeable, super nice guy. Uh, Todd Rovey's his name. Went over there and he lent, lent me a receiver. Put it on there, boom, started working right away. So I'm gonna take this receiver back to the office and take it apart and see if there's something simple, it's never simple. The only place that works on these is a couple hours away in Yuma, Arizona. It's a holiday weekend, late in the afternoon. So I don't think I'm gonna get mine working anytime soon. So right now, He's gonna try to find the slope of this field. So he's got, there's a mode on the receiver inside the tractor, the box that says search. And it is going to, it's just reading numbers off uh, on how much it's falling. And so he will, uh, he'll, he'll play with the, uh, with the uh, transmitter until as he's going down, the numbers barely change. Once, once he gets to where the numbers are barely changing, that means he's got the slope of the field. So he's probably got the remote out. I'm gonna change it. It's probably changed. The numbers are falling or growing too much, so he's going to uh, change them. I hope that's what he's doing. If not, that means it's broke down again. There he goes. Hope that was a problem. So, anyways, man, if it wasn't for neighbors, see, I did a good deed this morning. Bailed up a couple borders for my neighbor, and I guess karma is real. <laughs> my neighbor, this guy's let me borrow stuff before. They've got 
quite a few of these setups, so uh, he understands the frustration. They swapped, switched over to a Jeep, uh, full GPS system, and uh, he was telling me, he's like, man, you should really switch over, but it, he said, be prepared to spend about $18,000, so I don't know if I'm ready to make that switch yet. The system works really well when it works. Unfortunately, when it doesn't work, there are a lot of places you can have a failure. So, I don't know. I think we're gonna stick with this for a while. All right, back to the office. I hope there's no more problems. See you guys. All right, so, I put my buddy, neighbor, the other farmer, his receiver on our uh, laser bucket and it worked so I came back to the shop and I started taking apart our receiver I've had I've got water in this in the past and it um, quit working and so I thought well we did just get an inch and a quarter of rain so might as well take it apart right so I'm just taking it apart this is actually each one of these get close is a sensor and it catches those eyes now individually they can go out so it doesn't make sense so this whole thing could technically go out at one time like the fuse to it or whatever the relay but if it doesn't generally the whole thing doesn't just go out you lose one or two or a few at a time and you can keep going so it doesn't make sense for them to all to go out but like I said I'm just looking to see if there's any moisture in here or if I could see on there where um, in there on the computer if there was some um, uh, build up from moisture or something fried or I don't know just trying to figure anything out which I haven't figured anything out I didn't really have high hopes but just just starting somewhere so I got to get this down to Yuma Arizona for those guys to dig into it and find out what's wrong so I'm not borrowing my neighbor's receiver very long. Anyways, that's what I'm doing now. Got some clouds building up. It is very humid and it is very hot. I'll let you guys know how it goes. America.